everybody, welcome back to my channel. We're back for episode three of the Witchcraft Wednesday Tarot series. Um, I am gonna be doing the swords today, which as I explained in part two, where I talked about the cups, the swords, is a representation of the element of air. And air is um, basically like, you know, like a representation of like your thoughts, feelings, and communi- not feelings, sorry, your thoughts and communication. So all of this deck is gonna be kind of revolved around there. So if you ever do pull one of the swords in a reading, that's what it tends to resemble um, your thoughts and the way that you sort of communicate that. So we're just gonna get straight into the video. You guys know how this works. I've already done two videos on this. So um, yeah, let's just get started straight away with the Ace of Swords. So the Ace of Swords looks like so. You've just got the hand coming out the cloud, um, holding the sword with the olive and, oh, what's the other? leaf that it's holding the olive branch and the palm leaf it's just like that so very similar to the cups and um to the major arcana with the full the first card of the deck is always a resemble of like something new so the fact that this whole um what's the word i'm looking for suits i guess this suit um the, the swords is a representation of air thought and communication this card represents new um ideas new thoughts new feelings in that sense of and way so i've literally written new ideas and breakthroughs now you get this card in reverse and it's kind of like i've already explained many times it's the opposite of that or an extreme version so this card in reverse is a representation of doubting that new idea. So I've literally got clouded judgment and rethinking. So you've got that new idea, but maybe you're just not 100% sure with it. It's something that you're still a little bit, bit iffy about. So that's the Ace of Swords. Going into the Two of Swords, which looks like so. Now the two of swords is a representation of like decision making, like almost like a difficult one. Um, the way that I remember this is because the card is very, very similar, but it's completely different at the same time. So you've also got these mountains here. You've got two flying objects here. So you've got a bird on this side. You've got the butterflies on this side. Here you've got like, it's, it's basically almost like a mirror, but ever so slightly different. So I remember that as like, there's two different choices and she's sat in the middle. So she's obviously trying to, to decide which one to go down. Um, she's also blindfolded. So that's kind of like another thing of like, rather than being seeing it's in the head, like take away one of your senses almost like, that's how I see it. So like, it's, it's all in the mind. She's got two decisions to make um, and stuff like that. So get this in, reverse and it's a rich literally written information overload and confusion so it's obviously just like the extreme of like having two decisions to make so she's obviously or he um just confused about the decision doesn't know which path to take or whatnot so then we go into the three of swords which looks like so So this one also is another card quite easy to remember. The Three of Swords is quite literally a representation of pain, heartbreak, um, betrayal, anything like that. You've got the swords stabbed right through the heart so it can re it, it's quite easy to literally represent pain, heartbreak um, and all that sort of jazz. Uh, there are, however, doves in this, so that is a representation of hope. So there is still hope there, but there's a big, big, big focus of pain. Um, get this card in reverse and you're pretty much looking at either or so you can either go into the whole dove aspect things of, of that so like kind of like healing from the pain oh, healing from the pain I've literally written hope forgiveness releasing of pain um or you could go to another extreme where it's just like not not coming back from that the hope is completely gone and you're almost like in a darker sort of pit of of that pain I guess um from the Three of Swords, we go into the Four of Swords, which looks like so. So this card is almost like a continuation from the Three of Swords. And the only reason I say that is because you've got a very similar 
you've basically got the stained glass window in the background. So it's a continuation of that. The fact that you're in like, I mean, that's quite morbid because it's like a tombstone thing. I'm not sure, but you just see this as like the healing process. So you've started to heal, take it as like just a person resting. And the fact that the heartbreak is in the background, it's like in the past. So um, this is like the regeneration, regeneration, did I write that? Recuperation. Um, recuperation, moving forward and healing. So it's the whole healing process, resting, um, getting past the pain of the heartbreak and stuff like that. So you get this card in reverse and it's the extreme of that. So it's almost like you've over, either over rested and you've become a bit stagnant or um, it's like you're burnt out and it's just too extreme that you are pretty much in that tomb and just dead. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've just put burnt out and exhausted. Five of Swords looks like so. So this is a this card is again quite easy to remember because of the picture. So this one is a representation of like a conflict. So you can see that there's he's holding like the swords over. There's someone here that's being all sad and someone else. Um, well, there's two of them. So there's two of them being sad. So it's quite a difficult conflict. Um, winning of that conflict anything like what's it called winning by a all means cost that sort of thing it's all about like competition all of that kind of jazz um get this card in reverse and i have written making amends and past resentment so it's almost like you've had that conflict you've got that like competition or that sort of like almost kind of like competitive nature but in it, it's almost like a bit too extreme with it like that way because it is like winning by all means um and this one's kind of just like making amends with that or just like resenting the person so just think of yourself as like being this guy here rather than this guy here winning just think of it as like you kind of lost you kind of resenting that sort of situation so though moving on to the six of swords which looks like so So this card again is quite easy to remember because of the images so the images it is just like you know they're in a boat then they're, they're kind of in rough sea however you can see the calm seas i'm just swearing sorry you can see the calm sea in the background so it's about moving forward it's about a transition from a difficult situation into a clear situation into a better environment into a better situation all that kind of jazz so um yeah, it, this as it could just be a representation of just moving forward, having clearer thoughts, having difficult or even just having very conflicting thoughts in a very difficult situation mentally and being able to move forward from that and um, into clearer seas, clearer thoughts, clearer, clearer things like that. So, um, yeah, I've put transition, hope, head and change. Um, it did actually mention something that I quite liked in this li in the little book that comes with the cards. The, pl the black pole symbolises potential. So the black pole that he's holding is that potential. So that's that's quite cool. Um, get this in reverse. And it is a symbol of unfinished business, resistance to change. So there is change in that card. You can see that. So it is the reverse of that is like when you don't want that change to happen or unfinished business you're not quite ready to move on you're not quite ready for that change all of that sort of stuff so you're still in this difficult situation with the rough seas the seven of swords looks like this so <laughs> i don't know if you can actually see let me try and go really close doesn't really there you go look at his face <laughs> so um let me just let the camera focus on me again focus please there we go so um the seven of swords is a representation of betrayal um almost i see it as more like sly being sneaky kind of just like because you can see he's literally holding the swords. He's running away from the campsite. He had that weird ass look on his face. So it's kind of like he's stolen the swords. He's, he's, he's getting away with that. So it's, it is a representation of that. Like he feels accomplished. He feels like he's being sneaky and like he's gotten away with something. Um, get this in reverse. And I have written here. 
keeping secrets and self-deceit. So yeah, I mean, it is a representation of like getting away with something. You've kind of stolen something and you're being like kind of sly and cheeky in the background. Um, and there is that deceit there. So there is deceit because you've stolen something. You're, you've kind of gotten away with something. Someone else is probably going to get the blame. Um, so think of it as like, all of that but on yourself so self-deceit like you're just lying to yourself you've kind of stolen from yourself in that way um and stuff like that keeping secrets the eight of swords is like so so the eight of swords is a representation of like victim um what have i put here Victim mentality, imprisonment, self-imposed restriction, self-imposed restriction. Um, so you can see she is literally tied up. She's got the swords all facing down into the ground. Um, we do, however, have that castle in the background. It is quite high up. So it's the castle like in the cups is a representation of um, hope. So there is still that sort of like hope there, but it's she's you know she's um blindfolded and tied up so she can't she's basically like blinding herself from the truth uh she can't see that hope so she's almost yeah it's it's kind of like that whole like impo imposing in yourself and just kind of just being a bit like um what's it called when you go into yourself, um, oh my God, you know what I'm talking about anyway. So yeah, it's like sort of victim mentality, uh, damsel in distress, doesn't really want to see the truth though. So she's kind of like being naive to the fact that there is hope there. So there's that hope there. Um, get this in reverse and it is releasing negative thoughts and open to new perspectives. So um, yeah, you, you know, just kind of think of, in reverse like fingers crossed gravity will do its thing and take that blindfold off her face and she'll start to see that perspective see that hope in the background there is hope in that card so um that is the eight of swords the nine of swords looks like so so this card represents like anxiety, depression, fear, nightmares, because she is in bed. It's almost like she's woken up and she's kind of like crying. Um, the swords, however, like this is a representation of like mental fear of like almost like the unknown. I always kind of like that's how I kind of resemble it, because although there are swords like facing on her, they're not actually touching her. So it's almost like that fear of like it happening, but it isn't happening. So anxiety pretty much. Um, you get this in reverse and it can be like one of two things so it can be um the fear like becoming a reality so like what have i written yeah deep stated fear so that's really set in now it's not about anxiety anymore it's, it's deeper than that or you're releasing the fear so you're kind of getting over that that fear that anxiety the worry um so again it, it can be one or two of extremes uh just depending on the question that may be asked number 10 of swords 10 of swords looks like so so obviously this person is dead and like the major arcana with the the um death card Death is a representation of like new beginnings, but with this one, you can see that he's been stabbed 10 times in the back, which is obviously like a representation of like a really, really like horrific way to die. It's like the end of something, but in like a really devastating way. So that's, that is like a representation of like new beginnings, a new start, but not in a positive sense. It's something really, really bad has happened. You feel backstabbed, um, betrayed, hurt all that kind of stuff because yeah i mean you're, you're dead so it is the end of something in a bad way um you get this in reverse and you could almost see it as like rejuvenation so like coming back from that pain in like a positive way um i've also written like recovery resisting an inevitable change as well so like recovering from that that pain in a positive way as well so like regenerating it coming back from it recovering or just like trying really like knowing that that's coming but kind of being 
blind to it I guess like not wanting to believe that that's going to happen and that you know you're going to get backstabbed and, and the end is coming and a horrible horrible end at that so um you're kind of in denial moving to the page of swords which looks like this now this card is a representation of new beginnings like new thoughts new ideas as well um it is kind of like hard to remember that the only reason i do kind of remember that one is because it it does similarly remind me of the full card um just because he is like in an open field uh he's holding the sword like upright to the left which in the book actually stated that the position of his sword where is it the tilt of the sword to the left suggests the creative power of the mind so there is like that sort of element to it but it is a representation of new ideas new ways of communicating and then in reverse it's like think of like having those ideas but not doing anything about it so it's like all talk no walk basically all talk no action um, and that is the page of swords that takes us to the knight of swords which looks like this so you can see in this card they are moving at some serious speed so similar like well not even similar like opposite to the page of swords which was a representation of like having a new idea new communications but possibly not actually fall following following through with that the um the knight of swords is all action he goes straight in um at high speeds it's very intense sort of card um what else have I written? Fast thinking and action oriented. So it's all about go, go, go and just getting that thing done. Get this card in reverse and it's almost like impulsive and um, kind of like recklessness. Um, yeah, restless and impulsive as well. So just like restlessness, like not being able to sit still, um, almost in a bad way, like maybe not thinking something through enough and just jumping straight in and, and not really analyzing the consequences or planning out um and that's that so then we go to the queen of swords which looks like this so the queen of swords is a representation of like independence and kind of like rising above like rising above emotion having like a clear thought and the reason i say this is because you can see here that there is like a cloud like the um a stormy cloud and her head is above it so rather than it being higher up it's it's almost like below and her head is above and she's sat quite poised so it is a representation of like having that deeper ha having that deeper feeling but not allowing it to cloud your judgment and and kind of rising above it um and being very independent um get this card however in reverse and it does represent uh like um easily influenced possibly like by your emotion by your thoughts and like just very easily swayed bitchy and cold sort of like yeah just almost like two in your head rather than being fair um Yeah, overly emotional, easily influenced, that's what I wrote. Right, so that leaves us with the last card, which is the King of Swords, which looks like so. Now, the King of Swords is a representation of intellectual power. You also got to remember from the Major Arcana as well, like with the Priestess, I think it was the Priestess, um, he's wearing a purple cloak so the color purple is a representation of wisdom so this is like a wise king who's very intellectual intellectually powerful like this is all like you know the swords are a representation of the mind your thoughts and your communication and the king like having a king is a very powerful like they're a powerful um status so having those powerful thoughts um being wise with the um purple cloak there as well um the car the book also stated, let me read it again. The book also stated that the sword is slightly tilted to his right, which is a size, uh, which is a sign, uh, which is the side, oh my God, which is the side of action. So this is all about taking action, being very powerful, like intellectually um, smart, wise, all that sort of stuff. Um, get this card in reverse and think of that in like the opposite sense or in a very negative um or extreme way so it's about like manipulation think of uh, someone that's 
very intellectually powerful and very intellectually smart, but rather than using it in a positive way, uses it in a negative way. So um, they are quite manipulative. Uh, I've also written uh, misuse of power. So it's just an extreme version of a bad king, basically. Um, and that pretty much sums up the suits of the swords in the tarot deck and all of their representations. Um, I hope you did enjoy this video. If you guys have an easier way, again, like I've mentioned so many times before of, you know, how to interpret the cards or whatever it is, um, I'd really love to hear it. I'd like to just have a conversation about it because I just, I'm really enjoying learning tarot and I hope that this is helping someone else out there learning it as well. Um, so I hope you have enjoyed this video. Make sure you leave a like if you have and definitely subscribe to my channel because that would really help me out. Um, and I will see you guys next week. Uh, on Wednesday again with another video it will be part four and I think we're gonna do the wands next next week so see you then thanks bye <laughs>